Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus, the Messiah, the promised one from Nazareth, is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July the 13th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text this morning might be a very familiar story to you. It's going to come out of the book of Daniel and chapter 6. Now, it's known as the story of Daniel in the lion's den. But if every coin has two sides, then I want us to look at the other side of the coin in this story today. Now, let's begin at verse 1 and let's read to verse 3. It says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes. Now Darius is king over the kingdom. Now these 120 princes shall be rulers over the whole kingdom. And over these 120 princes, there will be three that will be selected as presidents. And Daniel will be first among them. It tells us in verse 3 that Daniel was preferred above all the others because he had an excellent spirit within him. That would be the spirit of the living God, friends. That would be a humble spirit, a meek spirit, a gentle spirit, not someone who is power hungry, not someone who mistreats others, but a gentle man. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So the king wanted to make him, King Darius wanted to make him his number one man. Now, verse 4 tells us that these men were jealous of Daniel and the position that he held in the eye of King Darius. So they set out to destroy him. And as they tried to look for something to find fault, they could find nothing. And so in verse 5, it tells us, these men said, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Friends, what a legacy. If that only could be said of me, if that only could be said of you, that no one can find any fault in us other than our obedience, our allegiance, and our service to our God. And so in verse 7, they go to the king and they begin to devise this plot. It says, all the presidents of the kingdoms, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. So the plot has been set. The king has taken the bait. And he establishes this order throughout the entire kingdom that cannot be changed. You'll see that in verse 15. Well, in verse 10, we read something very interesting. It says, when Daniel knew that the writing had been signed by the king, Daniel went into his house. He opened his windows wide. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and he asked petition of God Almighty. He gave thanks before his God as he had always done. You know, we live in a country where there are many, maybe more of them than us that are trying to shut us up. They don't want us to speak against the LGBT movement. They don't want us to call homosexuality a sin. They don't want us to proclaim God's word against their lifestyles, whatever choices they may be. And there is coming a day where they will make it illegal for us to do the things that we now do. Will we, as Daniel, parade it in front of them? Because remember, it said when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, not only did he know that the writing had been signed, but he also knew what the writing said. He knew that he would be cast into a den of lions. But that wasn't enough to stop him from making his prayers for his people unto his God. And so in verse 12, it says, they came near, they spake before the king concerning the king's decree, reminding the king of what he had signed. And the king agrees with them and says, yes, this is true. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, this shall not be altered. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, 
regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed. But he makes his petition three times a day. Now they thought that this would create anger within the king, but look at what the king says. Then the king, Darius, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. So basically what he is doing is he's gathered all his most important people. They're going through every document that they can find, some type of loophole to deliver Daniel from this travesty. And yet, as we know the story, he was unable to do so. Now in verse 16, it says, The king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But now listen again to the king. The king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Now we're pretty sure in reading between the lines in this story that Daniel was a man of faith and had no question of God in entering into the lion's den. But Darius, this pagan king, says, Your God will deliver you. I know he will. When I look at verse 18, because Daniel has been cast into the lion's den, and this is what the king does. The king went to his palace. He passed the night fasting. This is a pagan king, friends. And he passed the night fasting. Neither did he allow instruments of music to be brought before him. And he did not sleep. The king then arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And again, listen to what the king says. When he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God. Now Darius is a king in the Mede and Persian empire. They didn't serve Jehovah. They served false gods. They served wooden structures and idols that had been created by men that didn't breathe and that didn't move. But he recognizes that in Daniel, Daniel serves the living God. And he says, you serve him continually, nonstop. I have watched your life and every moment of your life is in service to your God. And most of us know the rest of the story. So I want to skip ahead to verse 25. Because after Daniel has been pulled from the lion's den and his accusers have been cast into the lion's den, including their families, Darius goes before the kingdom and he wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, not just in his kingdom, but throughout all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I, Darius, make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Now notice this pagan king, he doesn't say lift your hands in worship. He doesn't say dance and sing. He doesn't say throw some great festival. He says fear and tremble before the living God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he is steadfast forever. And his kingdom which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivers, and he rescues, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. This is the God that has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. This is the God whom you should serve. Now, friends, when we began, I told you I wanted to see the other side of the coin of this story. And the other side of the coin is this. It's not the emphasis on Daniel. It's the emphasis on Darius. Darius, a pagan man, a sinful man, not from the bloodline of the Jews. And yet he sees in this man, Daniel, the work of the living God in a human life. And even before the miracle is done where Daniel escapes the lion's den in safety, Darius is already recognizing and praising the living God. And so the moral of the story this morning is simply this. Daniel's life had an impact on those around him. The 119 who tried to destroy him because they recognized that there was no fault in him. And then King Darius himself, because Darius has been watching Daniel. And before Daniel's thrown into the lion's den, he says in verse 16, I know that thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. 
Now, friends, we may have stopped and thought about the opportunity of meeting Daniel in the kingdom when we get there, but have you ever considered sitting down and enjoying fellowship with King Darius or King Nebuchadnezzar or Pharaoh or Caesar or Pilate or any of the rest of these who, from our perspective, appear to be villains of the Bible stories, but their conscience was marked by God by what was happening around them. And we know not how they left this earth. And so friends, I say all of that this morning to simply say this, you are making an effect on lives around you, whether you know it or not. They are watching you and that should create caution in your spirit that you would be on your P's and Q's, so to speak, at all times in service to God continually as Daniel was because someone is just looking for one thing to say negative against you. And when they can, it gives them all the reason to continue to deny and fail to surrender to the work of the Lord Jesus. But if they scratch their heads at night, wondering what it is that's different about you, knowing themselves and all others that they have known throughout their lives, and that you stand out as a light on a shining hill, friends, you have a great responsibility to be a representative of the kingdom of heaven. Take that responsibility seriously. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so glad that you spent a few moments with us this morning. I pray that your journey will be blessed. Your soul will be full of joy and each and every step, each and everything that you do today will bring him honor, glory, and praise because he is the only one deserving of such recognition. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I'll see you on the next video.